Okay, for the chicken part of this recipe, I have this large pot. Here I have four and a half pounds of chicken thighs. And I tried to remove as much of the fat as I could. We don't eat that much. Now, I have used chicken breast, and of course, it's not as flavorful with the tamales as the chicken thighs. So I personally prefer the thighs, but if you wanna use the breast, by all means, go ahead. Okay, we are going to add some garlic. I have five cloves of garlic. A couple of these are very small, so I'm just counting them as one. I have two celery stalks. We're just gonna chop them in large pieces because we're gonna take this out in the end anyway. Okay, we have a half of a large onion, which I have quartered, and one large carrot. And this is gonna be so we can get a lot of flavor from our stock that's gonna come out of there. One tablespoon of salt. And then we are gonna cover this with water. And of course, you know that this is gonna shrink down a little bit, so just push it down. Once it comes to the boil, you wanna boil this for at least an hour or until the chicken shreds easily, okay? Just like that. So we're gonna let this be, we're gonna cover it, put it on medium heat, and let it boil for one hour. I'm gonna move this to the other burner, and I'm gonna start showing you what we're gonna use for the tomatillo sauce that we're gonna use for these tamales. Okay, for the tomatillos, for the green tomatoes, I did peel them, wash them, and we are going to add a half of a medium onion and just quarter it. We're gonna add, that's two garlic cloves, two large garlic cloves. We are going to add two chile serranos that I have seeded, okay? If you like them spicier, leave the seeds in. That's up to you, okay? And then we are going to add a teaspoon of salt. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the water. Now the water is just, we're not gonna cover the tomato. because this tomato, as it cooks down, we're gonna come up about halfway, and that's it. Because this tomato, when it cooks down, it gets very mushy and very watery. So when we incorporate that with the chicken, we don't want it to be coming out of our tamale leaves. So we just want this about halfway up on the tomatoes, as you can see there. Okay, I hope you can see that. Maybe just a little bit more. There we go, that's good. So we're gonna bring this up to the boil and move on to the next step. I'm gonna show you the chile guajillo. Okay, for the chile guajillo for the masa, here I have five chiles guajillos that I did clean and remove the seeds and the veins, okay? And this one, we're not gonna boil too long. We have one clove of garlic and one quarter of a piece of onion and a teaspoon of salt, okay? And this, we're gonna add some water just to barely cover it because the masa in these tamales, it's not as dark as the pork tamales. You just want a little bit of a tint to the masa, okay? So we're gonna bring this up to a boil and shut it off and let them steep for about 20 minutes or so, okay? So we have everything going on the stove the chicken, the tomatillos, and the chile guajillo. So I will bring you back as everything starts to finish and show you what the next step will be. Okay guys, we'll be right back. Okay guys, the chile guajillo already came to a boil and I'm gonna turn it off and we're gonna let it steep there for about 30 minutes until it cools so we can uh, puree it in the blender, okay? So we're just gonna let this be and everything else is still uh, boiling. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, this is the tomatillos that have been simmering for about 20 minutes. It doesn't take long for these to cook. Like I said, we're gonna leave these, we're gonna turn this off already. We're gonna leave them covered and let to cool for about a half an hour so we can puree them in the blender. We'll be back in a few minutes. Okay guys, the chicken had been boiling. It's been here for like an hour and a half. I'm gonna turn it off and we are gonna let this cool so we're able to shred the chicken after it's cool. I'm gonna let this cool for about a half an hour and then I'll be back. Okay guys, I took out all the chicken and this is the broth that we have left over. So we're gonna reserve this and we're gonna let this cool off so that we can shred it and then blend all our chile and our tomato, okay? Now that the tomatillos have cooled, I am going to puree everything in the blender. 
I do have more liquid reserve, but I'm going to pull some of this out because we may not use it all. So I like to add it a little bit at a time because like I said, we don't want the, the chicken too, with too much broth because and then it just slips out of your tamales and that we don't want that. And all this, if you don't want to do all this in one day, the steps that I have taken you through today, right now, you can do all this ahead of time, put it in the refrigerator, and then assemble your masa and uh, spread the dough the next day, if you like, if you like to do things ahead of time. Okay, and to this, we are going to add a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so we're just going to puree this till very fine. Okay, and then we're going to put the, the sauce back into our bowl. I think that's going to be enough liquid. And then we are going to puree the chile guajillos next. You don't even have to rinse the blender for this. You can just do it right in the same blender. So we're still going to reserve the extra broth that we had from the tomatillos that we boiled and we're going to set this aside. Okay, now for the chile guajillo, we have the piece of garlic and the onion. We're going to leave all that in there along with the, the water that was in there. And we are going to add a half of a teaspoon of salt to this. Okay, we're going to season as we go. Always season as you go. Okay, we're going to puree this till very, very fine. Okay, then... On this, we are going to run it through a sieve to make sure that there's no skin left from the chiles, okay? Okay, now in a bowl with a sieve, we are going to run this through. And then just take your spoon and run it through like this. And you can see what starts to stay behind. There is nothing but the peel for the chile, which you don't want that. Now we are going to shred our chicken. This, you just discard it. Just throw it in the trash can. We don't need this anymore. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to chop up the chicken that we are going to saute with the tomatillo that we've had cooling here. So I'm just going to put it here on my uh, cutting board a little bit at a time and I'm just going to chop it up roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to break down some more while we're simmering it with the tomatillo. Okay? And that's all you need, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and put it into the pot that we're going to use to simmer it. And that's it. So just keep going. Okay, and there's our large chicken. And we, I'm going to transfer y'all back over to the stove so we can get this simmering with the tomatillo sauce. I'll be right Okay, now we have our chicken on the stove over medium heat. We are going to add the tomatillo sauce. Okay, we're not going to add all of it. We're just going to add a half to start. And then we're going to incorporate it. Make sure everything is mixed in there nicely. And this is when you're going to start to taste to make sure you have enough salt in your chicken. This is pretty much going to be the last chance that you have to uh, season your chicken. And as you can see, the chicken uh, absorbed pretty much all the tomatillo, so we're going to add some more. I just like to add a half at first to make sure that it blends up real nice, mixes up real nice. And we're going to let this simmer for about 30 minutes. Everything's already cooked. We're just going to combine the flavors now and taste for seasoning. Okay, so here I've combined everything and I'm going to give it a taste so we can check the salt on it. And it is going to need about a teaspoon of salt. And like I said, you adjust it to your preference at this point. Tastes very good. It's not spicy, even though we added the two chile serranos, because this is such a large quantity that it's not it's not spicy at all. So I'm gonna give it another little taste here. Okay, perfect. So that should do it. We're gonna let this simmer for about 30 minutes, and then I will be back after that. We're gonna let this cool down. I'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, we are going to move on to the dough, the masa process. Okay, I have this large pot that I use here in the sink just so that I don't make a mess all the way around because I'm a pretty short person. So I put it in here and I'm going to mix my ingredients in here. And in this other sink over here, I have my, my hojas, my leaves, 
soaking in water, okay? I like to clean these and they need to soften. And as you can see, they have a lot of silk. So we need to clean them to make sure they're debris free and ready to go for when we're done with our masa. So I'm gonna take y'all step by step on how I make the dough. Over here, I have what we're gonna use. This is the, the chicken broth that we had from our chicken. This is the lard. If you don't want to use lard, you don't have to. You can use sh vegetable shortening, okay? In my case, I'm going to use lard. I have salt. I have the baking powder. I have some chicken bouillon. And then I have our chile guajillos that we uh, pureed. And this is what I'm going to use for the, the dough, the maseca. This is also something you can use for tortillas and and different um, pitas and stuff like that. But this is what we're gonna use. I'm not gonna use the whole bag because this is dehydrated. And when we hydrate it, it doubles. So I only use half of a bag. So it's 4.4 pounds. I use 2.2 pounds for my recipe, okay? I will link the entire recipe in the description bar below. So just take a look there. I will also uh, add it to my Facebook page so that you can uh, print it out from there. So we're going to get started. Okay, we're going to take half of our masa. We are going to add our seasoning. We're going to add the salt, the baking powder, and the chicken bouillon, okay, which is the consomme. Some people don't like to use that. You don't have to. You can just add more salt. And I will leave the, the recipe, like I said, in the description bar. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to get this incorporated, get it mixed up. Okay, now that we have that incorporated, we're going to add in our broth, or half of our broth, and half of our shortening, or lard, I should say. And we're going to rehydrate this. We're going to add in half of the chile guajillo. Now, on my pork tamales, I would have used all of this. But this, I just want a little bit of color on my dough. I don't want a whole lot because they're chicken. And that's just personal preference. I don't want it too, too red. So after we just start mixing this, and as you can see, it tightens up pretty good because it still needs, of course, more broth and more, more lard. And you want to mix this real well. You don't want patches of anything. Okay, we still, this tightened up quite a bit still. So I am going to add more, more broth, more chicken broth. Okay guys, I have been um, mixing this for about 10 minutes. Okay, so I, I like to make sure that there's no lumps or anything in my masa. So um, this is ready, and I'm going to transfer this over to a smaller bowl, and we're going to start to um, spread the dough on the leaves. Okay, so I'm going to transfer y'all over to the counter. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Okay, guys, we're going to start putting the dough the masa on our leaves. Now on the leaves, there's a rough side. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can. And you can hear it, it's pretty rough. And then there's a smoother side. And we're gonna put the dough on the smoother side. Now, there are several ways that you can do this. You can use a back of a spoon. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go about two thirds up on the leaf and then just spread it downward like that. Okay, whatever's easier for you is what I just recommend that you do, okay? Go like that. Or you can use an offset spatula. And same thing. Rub it on. I'm going to try to do this so like that. Like that. And then just pile them up like that. But I like to use this little gadget that I found. I showed it on my last video. Um, 
this spreader. And what I do is I put the dough down on the counter like this. Of course, it's clean. And then I take my, my leaf. I find the smooth side. This is a little big. And you just load it up like this. And then you have to be careful with the silk of the corn husk because you'll get some in your dough and you don't want that. Okay, and then it's just a matter of flattening out the leaf, pressing it down, and that's it. Gets it as even as possible, see? And then you pick this back up and do the next one. I will leave this link down below for y'all. I just absolutely love it. Such a great invention. See, just like that. Scoop it back up, get the next one. So I'm just going to keep going with these and then we're going to stuff them with the chicken. Now we are going to add the chicken to the, uh, to the leaves. So what I do is, this is a chicken that we had. I like to put on these just a little bit thicker than I normally do the pork. Oops, that's a little too much. Okay, same, it's the same process. You just turn the leaf over, over, pinch the top, and under, just like that. Okay. Over, over, under, and pinch the top. Just like that. Okay, and then I just start setting them to the side. I have a tray over here that I like to place them on. And I'm just going to keep going with these. Now, this point. You can add as much or as little as you want. That part is up to you. If you like them thin, if you like them thicker, that's up to you. You do whatever your family likes. It's your kitchen. I'm just showing you the way I make it. That doesn't mean everybody makes them like that. Everybody has different ways to do it. And then if you find a way that's easier for you and you want to change it, that's okay. I'm just giving you my recipe to see if it works for you. If you're a first time tamal maker, I would recommend to make a small batch in case something goes wrong that you know you, you need to, something went wrong for your recipe, to not to mess up all your products. I would just do a half of a batch. I will leave my recipe link below. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I try to get back to y'all as quick as I can. Piece of silk right there, I just take them off. It won't hurt you, but of course nobody wants to bite into that. I start piling them up because it starts to get kind of full on the counter and then I just leave them here till I'm ready to pack them in the steamer to steam them. I already have some on the stove just about ready to come out. Okay that's the last one. Now we're going to move on to the next step and we're going to put them into the steamer basket. Okay guys we're going to load the steamer basket. I have this 12 quart stock pot with the steamer basket in it. I don't add the water yet and I will show you why. I like to tilt my basket over like this 
to add the tamales so they don't fall over. And what I do is I just start loading them down, laying them down like this. I lay them down like this and they won't fall over. Okay? So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Just like that. And I already know how much water this steamer takes and I have it here on the side and I will add it after I get all my tamales in there. And these should all fit in here nicely. There's not too many of them. Like I said, I already have another basket ready to come out to show y'all in a little bit. So I just keep going, one on top of the other, just like that. Okay, just like that. Now on the edge here, so that things don't fall over, I get some of the, the corn husks that I didn't fill and I shove them here on the side so they don't fall over. Then I bring this forward, let me zoom you all out, and then on the side that I have the leaves is where I add the water so it doesn't wet my tamales, okay? Let me see if you can see that. Okay, now we're going to cover these tamales with some more leaves, and that's just to contain the steam, and they steam nice. Just cover it like that. Just like that. And we are going to pop it on the stove. And we're going to let them cook for two hours from the time that you turn it on till the time that these are done. Now, you still have to check them because everybody's stove is different. And if you have an electric stove, I'm not real sure about the cook time. You're going to have to check them yourself. I know that on mine, from start to finish, it takes two hours from the time that it starts to boil the water until it starts to steam. It's about an hour and 20 minutes. So I say a total of two hours. Okay, let me get a lid. Okay, I have everything, the leaves on top. We are going to cover this with a lid, pop it on the stove, turn it on for two hours. I will be back to check with y'all after we test the first tamale. Okay guys, so I took the tamales off the stove. It's still hot. Uh, but they were on for two and a half hours, okay? Um, I'm going to show you, in my last video on the pork tamales, somebody had a question about the dough. When you first take the tamales off the stove, they're going to be a little bit mushy. You need to let them sit in the pot for at least an hour for them to set up, okay? And then you, that's when you will have this effect on, on it. Okay, so if they look mushy, it's okay. That's how they're supposed to look. And then you leave them in the pot to set up. Okay, and there's the tamal. Okay, let me put this down here so I can cut into it so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, it doesn't actually look green like the tomatillos, but the chicken is very, we've already had some from the previous pot. I'm going to break this up so you can see how nice and, and moist the chicken is. It's not dry at all. So now you know to leave them in the pot, let them set. These are still kind of warm. And then they will set up and then you're able to peel the, the corn husk off. Just like that. Let me give you a close up. Oof, these are still hot. Just like that. Okay guys, if y'all have any questions about the dough or anything that you may want to know about, I will link the recipe in the description bar and it will be on my page on Facebook at Virtual Kitchen with Laura. Spreader and I will link the pots that I use also so you can take a look at them in case you need to purchase one okay guys that's going to conclude the video for today i hope that it's helpful for you if you have any questions at all as far as the dough or the recipe or anything uh, just leave a comment below and i will get back with you all as soon as i can so i will like i said i will have the recipe listed in the description bar and on my facebook page at virtual kitchen with laura okay and if you haven't hit that subscribe button right here Go ahead and click on it so you can be notified every time I upload a video. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. 
subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook at Virtual Kitchen with Laura. Okay guys, talk to y'all later. Bye.